Hello there, this is Time Lord 91011 with a new tutorial on how to make your Tidmouth shed by resizing your Volumere 6 store roundhouse product that some of you have purchased or are thinking of purchasing it, which I would recommend it as the following entrances look like the same from seasons 1 to 5 of Thomas and Friends. But it's entirely up to you. I'm just going to show you how to resize the length to match the sheds near enough to the Tidmouth sheds in the TV series. Of course you can make the roundhouse to how it is with the instructions it comes with. But how I've seen it when making it, the product takes up a lot of room for my set and it doesn't look close enough to the one in the TV series. But as I said earlier, it's up to you. Now to begin with, I got a piece of paper which I've drawn around the original size of a spare base piece I got from the Volmir free store roundhouse. Here's the spare base piece of how it looks like in line with the drawing when the front doors are attached on. So after I did that, I cut off the end side from here and cut off the other end side from here using a multi-purpose tool. Using the cut off side bits, I aligned it to the position of the original size and keeping the point where the doors are attached on in the same spot. I moved the other end around carefully to a position I thought was suitable and close to the inside of the shed from the TV series. And here are the measurements I got for the back piece of the base. I marked down the areas of the measurements shown in the last scene and I cut along the markings using a multi-purpose tool like this. And there you have your new length for the back piece. But we mustn't forget to sand down the cutting areas using sandpaper or multi-purpose tool. So it will look smooth to be glued together with the end side pieces. And to glue the pieces together we need liquid glue like this product I have here. We just need to get a strip of masking tape and put it underneath the base like this. Then we apply the liquid glue like this. And then we wrap the masking tape around the glued area. Leave it to dry. And once the pieces of the first engine berth base are put together, it should look something like this. Now before I went any further I decided to see what the length of the sheds would look. So I got my resized berth base piece and drew, and drew around it six times on three pieces of paper. Then I sellotaped them together and I got this result as this scene shows. And I have to say it looks great. It's about the same length as the turntable and the same shape like as it does in the TV series. Now once we've done the same cutting and gluing process to the other berth base sections, we just need to add them and glue them together as it shows us on the instruction papers. For the back wall of the individual berth, 
To get them the same length as the birth base, we need to cut between the two windows, which I'll show you later. If you prepared the back wall like this here, we can still use it. We just need to cut the see-through plastic using a multi-purpose tool, which we do it like this. But when cutting it, we must be careful not to cut the back wall with the multi-purpose tool because it may damage the model detail of the wall. Plus we want to use the piece we've cut off a little later on. Now to cut the wall, we cut here as this scene of the wall shows you where. And we do it using a standing knife. Very carefully and slowly. Also, using a right angle tool to help control the straightness of the cut, like this. This process takes a lot of patience and time to get it just right. Once cut, the back wall should look something like this. Which this is the starting point to resizing the back wall. For the pieces we cut off from the wall bit, we mark a line on the pieces that we'll need to add to the main wall section. So how I've done it is use the length I made my base berth pieces which that was 10.6 centimeters and the wall starting point was 7.7 centimeters. So taking that away from 10.6 centimeters gave me 2.9 centimeters then divided by 2 gave me 1.45 centimeters to add to each side of the starting wall. Then I applied that to the cut off pieces, which is one and a quarter brick away from the window. And that is what we can use for these sections. So now, once we've marked where we need to cut, we need to get the standing knife and carefully cut it like before. Which after some time, it will look something like this. Then we apply this phase to the other cut off bit and later on we should get something like this. Then we add both pieces to the main wall piece using liquid glue and it should look something like this. To get the measurements for the window bits in between the roof panels in resizing it we need to attach the reside back walls and bases together with the sheds, doors and other bits from the kit set to get to something like this. Then we measure the areas where the windows go and we get these measurements. Once we've recorded down these measurements, we apply them to the correct sections and cut them using a standing knife. For the front window sections, we cut off these end bits closest to the window, like this. And the cut off end bits should look like this. To resize the front window, we need to cut off one window square from one side 
and another square from the other side of the window section. But a little later it should look like this. Before we put the end bits back onto the window section, we need to sand down the cut off end bits like this. Then check the end bits with the window section add up to the measurement we've recorded earlier. Once at the right measurement we glued the end bits back on using liquid glue and after leaving it to dry for a while the front window section should look something like this. For the back window sections we cut off the end bits in this area away from the window like this and the cut off end bits should look like this. To resize the back window we need to cut off three window squares from one side and another three squares from the other side which it should look like this later on. Then we glue the end bits back on the window section and after leaving it to dry for a while the back window section should look something like this altogether. Then we attach the window sections to the areas of the roof where they would normally go and once all of them are on we measure the areas where the roof bits go. Once we've recorded the measurements for the roof we apply them to the correct panels but making sure that the measurements are in the center end areas of the panels like this. So in this stage we need to measure equally each side of the beginning size of the roof where they should be cut from. Once done we mark the areas and cut them carefully with a standing knife. But be careful when cutting it and double check your measurements too so they fit into the areas they're supposed to and don't glue them on just yet. Now we need to paint it to the right colour. After researching and looking carefully at the colour used in the TV series, I decided to use this colour, Matte Stone 121. When painting it, we need to paint around the doors and windows very slowly and carefully. Otherwise it will cause a lot of hassle when removing any accidental paint areas. Unless you haven't put the doors and windows on yet, then you don't need to worry about painting them slowly and carefully. Once painted, the shed walls should look something like this. For the roof, we paint that grey, which the type I used was Gloss 40 Grey. And when all the roof parts are painted, it should look something like this. And that should just about cover how to resize the roundhouse sheds. I know there are other bits and pieces to add, but I think you know how to add them on with help from the instructions that came with the kit. Well, I hope this video will be useful to you, all that are planning to add a Tidmouth shed section to their layouts. And please feel free to add any comments below because they may be useful. So thank you. This is Time Lord 91011 signing off.